Hi, this is going to be a real simple walkthrough for anybody wanting to send information from a Raspberry Pi over to a lab you target um, that you would use for your project. So in particular, uh, what is needed is the project that we have built here, and let me just walk you through what we're looking at. In particular, there are three VIs that are on the host level itself. There is one, the application that you're just going to have running, that could be any one of your applications. And then there's two other VIs. One is this global VI, which basically just has some named, it's named identifiers for some queues. So it's just basically the ID for what we're going to send data through to your host application. And then lastly, there's this Notify VI. Now this Notify VI is going to be dynamically invoked um, by the Raspberry Pi using the VI server backplane. It's a unique feature of LabVIEW that is a great enabler if you know how to use it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't by default, but this is going to be a really great application showing you how a VI that is called specifically on here can send data seamlessly, not using TCP IP, up into a host application itself. Now, in particular, the VI that we're looking here, you can tell that it is running on the Raspberry Pi, or in my Lynx Pi target, that is right here identified within my project. And this VI over here is going to be on the My Computer, or rather the host portion of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the host application. We're gonna walk through it real easily. So basically the application is really, 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 really simple. All it's doing is it initializes a few queues up front and then it just waits there. Now this is not necessarily the best mechanism where there's uh, two individual queue elements that you're waiting on at the same time. You could end up with a deadlock, but we know that basically if an element's in queued into this uh, queue, another one's gonna be in queued into this one by definition of the code at this point. But we're not gonna worry about that. But basically what happens is if um, if there's no timeout on this DQ element, um, then it's just going to go ahead and add a new element to the stack and then just display it on the screen. So every message that comes in. And in this section, we're actually going to go ahead and if it doesn't timeout, it's going to populate um, the complex waveform. It's actually transferring a complex waveform with no flattening or anything else like that. The data stays preserved. It's very nice. And we should be able to just right click and probe on this using one of those custom probes. Let me go ahead and pop it out. And now it's just going to sit here. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the windows around so you can see it. And once again, keep in mind, the stuff on the right-hand portion of the screen is indeed the host computer. Now this is the Raspberry Pi code. Let's go ahead and actually run it. close that one for a moment. We're going to walk you through the front panel. In particular, it sends two chunks of information, like what you saw on the host VI. It's going to do the information to send, and then also a message index to send. We're about to walk through what that means. But basically, when any, whenever you hit the send button, or if you were to use a digital input or anything like that, you could have the message sent. So let's see what is happening on the box backside. So up front, it looks like it's a lot, but it's a pretty simple chunk of code that's taking three separate messages, and it's turning them into a byte array. That's all that this is doing. It's basically hexadecimal information being transformed into a bunch of ones and zeros that we're using this VI to trim or to extend the definition of. We're using other modulation toolkit example, or not examples, modulation toolkit kind of utility VIs to set the user the system parameters and also define the pulse shape filter that would be used. Over here, we're actually uh, adding some guard bits at the beginning and the end of the bit array. And then also we're adding a sync pattern. Uh, it should be 32 bits worth and four, what was it, four QPSK, so that should be about 16 symbols, more than enough uh, in terms of sync bits to transmit across. But you'll notice one of the things, actually I'm gonna zoom in here again, that we're actually doing this N number of times for each one of the messages that got created up here. So we have a chunk of complex data sitting right here, actually three chunks of complex data, that we actually end up, once those are created, we sit inside of this while loop. So that's this structure on the outside here. That's just a while loop, and so it'll just sit there. And so whenever you hit the send button, it will pull off, this is an index array, it will pull off which specific message, pre-calculated message that you want to send and it will use this string of VIs that are basically, it opens up an application, pretty much a link to LabVIEW running on another computer. It opens up a link to a very specific VI that is already loaded on the other computer. And then it dynamically calls the VI on the block diagram, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So this is, uh, it calls it as though it were a sub VI on the block diagram, but it's actually executing remotely. 
Now in this case, the advantage that that gives us is we can send information into it. In this case, the message and the, um, the message or the, the notification string and the message complex data. And then we can also get information back from the other computer. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, but uh, let's see, we're just going to go, let's go ahead and run it so you can see it actually work. So we ran it, you saw that it deployed to the target. It is indeed running. You can see uh, that it indeed is running on the Raspberry Pi target by looking in the title bar. And we also, once again, have that probe. And so I'm going to do, uh, let's see, uh, 9, 10 p.m. message. It's G, and I'm going to send message 0. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the, we'll just look at the frequency power. So send that across. And so you can see that this is the message. This is actually code running on the Raspberry Pi. We don't have to have a front panel visible. Once again, if I had a button hooked up to my Raspberry Pi, instead of hitting the send button, as I did there, this could be hooked up to a digital read. Um, and, and yeah, so this is, that's about all that we need for the moment. And let's go ahead and change that message and do ain't that, ain't that slick. Send message one, and you should see that spectrum change a little bit, and we'll change the message two, and I'll change there. We can go over and look at the complex data here and the uh, you know, complex plane. You can see it change. The information isn't that different from each other, um, but you can see it running again and again. So once again, code running on the Raspberry Pi that is sending data seamlessly without flattening the string or anything else, no TCP listeners, anything. Um, and that's about all that you need. Now, one thing that I did leave out in terms of the way that it executes um, is a very interesting trick is that this VI that we have identified here, this notify VI, it's on the diagram, but it's only a reference to the VI. And if I look underneath the hood, you'll see that this is the VI that gets run. This is the code really that gets run on the host, not on the Raspberry Pi, but remember this, this chunk of code right here gets run over here on, on the actual PC host. And so this is what ends up happening. It takes, this is, these are the uh, actual pieces of data that were sent here. That have made their way across. And then this computer itself now runs with the data that you gave it and it puts it into the queue. Oh, let me go ahead and pull that back up. And it puts it into the queue. If you remember that global file that we talked about before, those are those global names for the very specific queues. And so it obtains a reference to that queue, which is already in memory, already running on the host application, and it basically pushes data into it. And then it clears the reference because the queue is still running in the background on the application host. So we don't need to worry about that. So if I go back over to the host VI once again, let's go ahead and look at that. So there's those very same cues that we see, and we're just waiting on that information to be put in there. Now, one thing that's really, really critical about this is that uh, in order for this VI to definitely be in memory, it needs to be as a static reference on a block diagram. That kind of forces it into memory, and that way the VI server can do what it needs to do. That's pretty much it. You can go ahead and run your host application, run your Raspberry Pi, Uh, fuck. Plus, plus. Change that around, and you can see some of the data changing. And so that's all that's really necessary to start, which is pretty nice. Now, a couple different gotchas to make sure that you keep an eye out for. VI Server is a great, great, great tool. And if you were to right-click on the links and go to Properties, you'll see that VI Server is in. You have need to make sure that it's enabled. And I would recommend using a service name instead of a port. You could choose a port statically, but then you might run into situations where that port would conflict with an active application. If you give it a service name instead, then LabVIEW will automatically pick the port and there's a service locator in the background that will um, actively associate this name with a port number. So it saves you the burden of having to try to find an active port. But you need to set that um, on in particular, uh, I think it's the my computer part of it, and you want to have that set up very specifically. Now, if you open up this project and you start from this project, these settings are already going to be there. But if you have your own project already established, create a blank project here, you'll see that those settings are not necessarily transferred through. 
you'll see that it is disabled and there's no port associated. So just be aware because if that port is not open and VI server is not enabled, when the remote computer attempts to do this type of uh, cleverness that VI server enables, it'll fail. It'll just say, I am unable, it'll spit an error out there, unable to connect to the system. And that's just the way that it's going to go. So just do please keep in mind that um, those few things, and if you run into issues trying to get your data back and forth, it's probably centered on your settings. It's either you've named a service wrong, um, you've given it the wrong IP, you can give it a, a host PC name for reference in this case. I think if I were to do, uh, let's see, MJKR search dash LT04, I think that's the one that I'm on right now. Uh, let's go ahead and run that again. And let's just see what we get. Hey, hey, there we go. So yes, indeed, you can put down the computer name uh, into there as well. So I hope this got you uh, up and uh, running in a way that you'd like to be in terms of sending information from your lowly Raspberry Pi uh, and then sending information to a Windows host um, that could be hooked up to a variety of things. It could be hooked up to the network. It could be hooked up to hardware, whatever you need. But this uh, technique and tactic is the one that uh, I would recommend. Uh, it's a little advanced because you are using VI server. But uh, there's, if you noticed, there's no flattening of data at all. The data structures are preserved. And so if you were to change or add a new input to this Notify VI, let me go ahead and add a new, oh, uh, let's just do a Boolean. Um, let's do silver Boolean buttons. Where's the checkbox? Checkbox, there you go. So if I wanted to add a checkbox to this and wire that through, Now this checkbox, you know, it, you didn't, you would need to have some other pipe, or you could even bundle together this information to get it to some other part of the program. But what I really wanted to showcase was that that is already updated here, simply by adding it to the connector pane of that Notify VI. And when I were to, if I were to, you know, create control, if I were to put this on here, this chunk of information that I just added to the Notify VI would make its way over to the host PC for whatever means that I would want it to. At this point, like I said, I'm just using queues as a way of getting it from this VI, which is called dynamically and doesn't really interface with any of the rest of the program, so that um, the rest of the, let's go ahead and close that here, get back to the host VI. Because once again, the host VI is just sitting here waiting for something to happen in it. So you have to have some mechanism signaling to this already running application that there's a new piece of information that has come to the host. And that's the twist is like VI server takes care of getting it to the host um, through that technique. But now you're responsible for finding a way to get it. Hey, it's, it's on the host computer now, but now it needs to make its way to the application. And in my case here, I'm just, like I said, I'm just going through and using the, um, uh, a, a simple queue, a named queues to be able to facilitate that one. And that's really about it. So if you have any other questions, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, please uh, utilize this and good luck.